you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, Dream Team? Coach D here coming at you from beautiful, sunny San Diego, and welcome back to the Live in the Dream podcast, where today we cover the topic of training to help you reach for your health, fitness, and wellness goals, and in order for you to live your dream life. And today I'm going to be honest with you. It really makes me sad when people say, I have bad genetics, and I can't build this muscle. And in particular, what I'm talking about this week is I can't build my butt or worse yet, they totally give their power away and they opt for something like surgery, butt implants. And this is not because I'm against cosmetic surgery or anything like that. It's definitely not because I think I have the right to tell people what to do with their bodies either. Neither of those things are true. But I have an appreciation for the science and the art of building muscle. I have an appreciation for the science and art of cosmetic surgery And I strongly believe that people have every right to do as they wish with their own body. The reason that I get annoyed when I see more and more people going for the surgical route and getting butt implants is simple because the butt is a muscle. Breasts are made of adipose fat tissue, lips and nose collagen, but the butt is a muscle. And I am a trainer. I've been training people professionally for almost two decades. And I know what the average person is capable of when they do it correctly. I know that anyone can build a muscle, whatever muscle, with the right consistent training and with the right good diet. If you apply the right formula, it's like clockwork. People build muscle and we can direct where we want to build that muscle. The glutes are the muscles that make up the butt, and if you build them, your butt will look firmer, your butt will look rounder, your butt will look bigger and more lifted, with no surgery required. You may also be wondering, then, why so many people opt for surgery when they could just build their butts. Well, most people think it's because surgery is the easy option, but I disagree. When you consider the cost of surgery— upwards of 5k, 10k, maybe even more, plus the risks of complications like scar tissue, infection, and the time taken off of work just to recover from the surgery, I don't think getting butt implants is the easy way out. I think the majority of people who opt to get butt implants first tried to build their butts and saw no results, which made them feel like their only option is to go the expensive and more risky surgery route. Some may have thrown up their hands and blamed their genetics, which is also not true. Your lifestyle, your diet, and your activity level are way bigger factors than your genetics. When I look at the vast majority of butt workout plans online, I can clearly see why so many people find it so challenging to build their butts. Most of these online programs utilize incredibly ineffective exercise selection. They use the wrong rep ranges and rep schemes, and they don't utilize full ranges of motion. You see it all the time on social media. Build this butt with banded walks, or with these fire hydrant exercises, or these tabletop kickbacks, and all of these other accessory moves that make you feel like it burns and feel like you're working. But the burn doesn't always equate to muscle gain just like soreness and sweating aren't always direct indicators of an effective workout. Even the rare programs that do have decent exercise selections don't address the problem of poor glute muscle activation, the mind to muscle connection, which makes all butt exercises not effective enough. Put bluntly, most of these online programs, they suck and they won't build a butt on anyone. They use models of people who have big butts already to promote this program, even though those models almost assuredly did not do the program that they're promoting to get the butt that they have. It's no wonder why people get so frustrated. 
So today I'm going to teach you a surefire way to build your butt. The exercises that I'm about to list are the most effective ones that I have seen, that I have used, that have been researched and scientifically proven. We will tell you the rep ranges. These rep ranges are the ones that build the most muscle and I'll teach you how to activate or prime your glutes effectively so that they fire fully and develop quickly. The most effective butt building exercises on earth are squats done a specific way, deadlifts, conventional or RDL, lunges and step ups, and of course, hip thrusts. Most strength coaches and personal trainers worth anything will agree that those movements that I just listed build muscle in the fastest way. Squats, deadlifts, lunges or step-ups, hip thrusts. That's not all, however. They also need to be done properly and with sufficient resistance or sufficient load or sufficient weight. Doing tons of reps just to quote-unquote feel the burn will do very little to build your butt muscles. You have to lift relatively heavy to get things to grow. Challenge yourself and your strength. As you get stronger, your butt will build. You need to send a big enough signal that your muscles are not strong enough for the weight that you're using, nor is your butt muscle big enough to do the work that you're asking it to do. Meaning you need to overload that muscle to send the signal for growth both size and strength growth. The best muscle building rep ranges are under 20 reps. Anything higher, any exercise that you can do more than 20 reps of, you're probably working to build more muscular endurance than strength, which usually means less muscle growth. I like to have people train in three different rep ranges over the course of six to nine weeks. So three different rep ranges three little phases over the course of six to nine weeks. The two to six rep range, two to six, very heavy, meaning there's a weight that you can't lift more than six times of. When's the last time you lifted something that you couldn't gun to your head, lift more than six times? Probably not very frequently. Uh, the next range from two to six is the eight to 12 rep range, which is moderately heavy. The eight to 12 rep range. I can lift this more than six times, but I can't get this above 12. If I hit my 10th, 11th rep, I am struggling to keep form. And then there's the rep range of 15 to 20, which is a little less heavy, a little bit more for hypertrophy, muscle growth, and pumping blood into that muscle. Train in one of those three rep ranges consistently for two to three weeks before changing to a new rep range. So two to three weeks, do heavy two to six reps per exercise. I pick an exercise, I put the weight on, I, after a good warm up, which I'll talk about, we'll put the weight on, heavy, I can't do more than six reps. Maybe I get to number six, I can't do any more. I rack it. Maybe I even add a little bit of weight to that. It drops my reps down to five or four or three. Now I'm really talking heavy. Once I do that for two to three weeks, I change it up. The body loves novelty. The body responds to novelty. Now I go to the eight to 12 rep range. Now it's not quite as heavy, but I'm still not able to do hundreds and hundreds of reps. I can only do eight to 12. And then I give my body a break from all that heavy lifting the next two to three weeks I take it up into the 15 to 20 rep range so it's a lighter weight for more reps and when I say rep range I'm not saying pick up the five pound weights and just do them until you hit that rep range right when I say eight to 12 reps that means you're picking a weight that you absolutely cannot do 13 reps of but at least you can do eight this takes a little bit of time to dial in what kind of weights that means to you if you're newer to lifting. So give yourself that time as a learning type of trial and error phase. But once you have the form down on the exercise that you're doing, if your goal is strength or muscle size growth, it's usually better to go heavy and fall short of your rep range goal than to go super light and to be able to do dozens of reps without it making much change to the muscle. 
Uh, you must challenge the muscle to send the signal that change is required. The glutes also respond to frequent training, as do most muscles. This means it's more effective to work your glutes three days a week instead of one day a week. And this is when the total volume is the same, if, if that makes sense. In other words, 15 sets of an exercise for your glutes on Monday is not nearly as effective as training your glutes for five sets on Monday, five sets on Wednesday, and five sets on Friday. A total of 15 sets either way, but the frequency is more frequent with the less sets, more days. It's the same total work, but much more effective when spread out frequently. Also, train in full ranges of motion. Go as far down with your movements as you have complete control over and come all the way up with your movements for a full squeeze and contraction. So you want that full stretch and you want that full squeeze. Using less weight for longer ranges of motion is more effective than going heavier for shorter ranges of motion. So you can see where this might start to get a little bit nuanced. I'm saying, yes, heavier is better, but if you have to go lighter in order to go full range of motion, then the fullest range of motion is the best case scenario while going as heavy as you can in order to enable you to get into your fullest range of motion. So I could do a quarter squat with 135 pounds and just go a quarter of the way down. And that will not be as beneficial to the growth goal that I have as if I dropped it to 95 pounds and I went all the way down on a squat, ass to grass, knees past parallel, fullest range of motion. Then as I get stronger and more skilled in the squat, I can start to add weight while still going down all the way. This isn't always the case, but when you're looking for muscle size, full range of motion is usually best. There are some athletes like LeBron James. He got a bunch of flack on the internet years ago because he was seen doing quarter squats with a lot of weight. He was training quarter squats because that's all he has to do in order to get uh, his jump off the ground. They were training a specific adaptation and, and all the people online that just saw him doing half squats didn't realize what they were training. So they were like, oh, no rep. He wasn't doing his full rep. And, and I would hope that the person training LeBron James kind of knows the difference between, you know, full range of motion and not full range of motion. And then what adaptation they're looking to get from the exercise. So yes, it's really nuanced here, but if you're looking for growth, you want to feel that muscle stretch all the way until it can't stretch no more and you haven't lost any form and you have complete control, once it's in the fullest stretch position, I actually like to pause and I like to feel that stretch. Once I feel that stretch, I can connect to that stretch. I try to reverse the movement. I try to reverse the stretch. And if I can reverse the stretch, what that's doing is that's allowing me to connect to every fiber of that contraction of that muscle contracting. And it helps me with a bigger squeeze at the top of that rep. When I can reverse the stretch, I can squeeze and contract the muscle harder. So full range of motion, really important here. Now, some people just can't seem to feel their glutes. Even when they're doing the right exercises, they have trouble connecting to the squeeze and the stretch of the muscle, which is kind of understandable. It's back behind us. We can't see us. A lot of us are sitting on it all day long. Like for these people that can't feel their glutes, priming is a must. Priming helps us to turn on a muscle, quote unquote, turn on. And it helps us to uh, fully fire that muscle from our central nervous system when we train it. This means that your central nervous system, your brain, all of the nerves that connect to that muscle, you're helping that central nervous system the brain connect to the muscle. You're helping the amplifier send power down to the speakers in order to perform optimally. People with poor butt muscle activation, they'll do squats all day long, day in and day out, and they're only going to develop their quads. They feel it in the front of their thighs when they do squats. Uh, instead of feeling it in their backside, which if that's their goal, this can be extremely frustrating. 
So priming is when you do specific movements before the exercise to get the person to feel what it feels like to contract that muscle. Once the person can feel what it feels like to contract the muscle, they can then take that and they can insert it into their bigger exercise. And now, and then you can see, you can even see it in their eyes. Their eyes light up and they're like, oh my gosh, I finally feel it. So priming is really, really cool here. Uh, this helps to activate your glutes when you're doing the most important exercises. This is where the short and typically ineffective movements are actually beneficial here. So if you take that mini band and you do those lateral mini band walks, or you do those donkey kickbacks or those fire hydrants, or my favorite is body weight glute bridges or single leg body weight glute bridges. These can be perfect priming exercises. Now, no, they're not going to build your butt. I already said that at the very beginning, but what they will do is they prime your muscle. They prime the exercise. They prime the mind to find that mind to muscle connection that is almost always required to build the target muscle. So let's go through a sample glute building workout complete with a priming exercise that is sure to build a butt on almost anyone. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're going to train three days a week. And on Monday, we're going to prime with body weight floor glute bridges. Focus on the squeeze, do three sets of 20 reps. So this is a high rep count. This is feeling the muscle squeeze and feeling the muscle release and stretch. Now, this is important. When you're doing glute bridges, most people, they're doing low back bridges, meaning that they're arching their low back so much to get their hips high in the air that they're not actually getting an optimal squeeze on their glutes. So what I want you to do when you do a glute bridge, you could even do this right now while you're listening if, if you're not doing anything else. Lay on the floor on your back, feet flat on the ground, knees bent. Pull the feet close to your butt. Now, you want to ground through your heels and you want to push through the arch of your foot, your big toe your heel of your arch, and you want to have the most of, weight, most of the weight in your heel. You're then going to push your lower back down into the floor. And what this does is this tilts the pelvis in a way that gives the glute the optimal position to squeeze. It takes the lower back out of the situation. So you're going to push your lower back down into the ground, which is going to tilt your pelvis. Then you're going to lift your butt one vertebra at a time from your tailbone up to your low back. So instead of just thinking about lifting your hips in the air, you're going to kind of think about this rolling situation. As you lift your hips, you're going to lift from your tailbone. And then it's almost like you're pulling your pelvis up towards your chin, one vertebra at a time. When you get to the very top of your rep, you're going to squeeze and you're going to hold pushing through the arch of your foot, your big toe, your heel, and having most of the weight in your heel. You're going to squeeze and then you're going to slowly come back down in the reverse order, rolling your vertebra down, uh, low back all the way to your tailbone. That's one. You're going to do three sets of 20. Now, the more you get into your set, the more, the less you're going to have to really think about moving super, super slow-mo, but the first few reps should be slow so that you can really feel the muscle. Once you have three sets of 20 with these floor hip bridges, your booty is on fire. You feel that muscle. Now, Monday, after your priming exercise, you're going to go to barbell back squats. Barbell squats, full range of motion. You want to have your torso angle just a little bit forward. You want to have pretty good depth here. If you can get your hips below knee height, that's going to really help you use your glutes as you come out of the hole. Feet position is going to be probably feet with a uh, hip width apart, just about the distance of your hips. And once you hit three sets of barbell squats with a slight forward lean in your torso angle, meaning you have to have good form, you have to have good core strength. Uh, if you feel this in your lower back, it's probably too heavy or your form's off, you're not quite ready for it. Once you get three sets of barbell squats, you're then gonna go into barbell hip thrusts. Barbell hip thrusts, you're gonna set this up for three sets, super heavy, low rep, you're going to squeeze at the top. You're going to go slow on the way down. So you have your priming exercise on Monday, hip thrusts, glute, body weight. You have your barbell squats for three sets, and you have your barbell hip thrusts for three sets. That's only six sets. 
Now you're going to move on to Wednesday. On Wednesday, we're going to prime with banded lateral walks. So take a mini band, put it above your knees, go slow, take 15 steps in one direction and 15 steps in the other direction and do three sets. Your steps should be slow. You should lead with your heel. Don't let your toe turn out to the side because then that's going to be the quad trying to take over. You want to use the outside of your glutes to really use that step and to slow your returning leg. Once you do your three sets of banded lateral walks, you're going to go into deadlifts. You could do conventional, you could do RDL, you could do a trap bar deadlift. Any of these really work. I prefer the conventional deadlift where your feet are hip width apart, you drop your butt and you stand up with your legs. An RDL is an is called a Romanian deadlift. Your legs are straighter. You can YouTube any of these. If you YouTube the difference between conventional and, and RDL on deadlifts, you'll see the difference. RDL is going to target your hamstrings, the back of your legs a little bit more. Uh, conventional deadlift I like because I feel like I get a more ra- well-rounded workout on the legs. Uh, and it also is a great back workout because you're holding all this weight isometrically with your back. Three sets of deadlifts, slow on the way down, feeling the stretch, powerful on the way up. And then you're going to do walking lunges. You could do this with uh, kettlebells, dumbbells. You could do this with the barbell on your back. Three sets of walking lunges. You're going to walk 20 reps one way and 20 reps the other way and take a break. You're going to do that for three sets. Uh, From there, that's Wednesday. The last workout of the week for Friday, we're going to prime with what we call hip cars, C-A-R-S, controlled articular rotations. Hip cars, you're in a tabletop position, your hands are under your shoulders, your knees are under your hips, like you're about to do cat-cow. Keep everything neutral with your spine, and now you're going to do a hip car by taking your hip, your knee, out to the side, And then you're going to wrap that knee all the way around like you're drawing a big circle back to the starting position. So it should look like you're taking the the femur, the leg bone. You're going to take it out to the side. And then you're going to take it through its fullest range of motion all the way around in a big circle. Once you finish three sets of hip cars, eight reps each on either side. You're going to do what they call donkey kickbacks. Donkey kickbacks, you're in that same tabletop position. You're going to... Keep your knee bent at 90 degree, and all you're going to do is you're going to take your foot and you're going to stomp it on the ceiling. You're going to take it and kick it back and squeeze your glute. That knee doesn't change from 90 degrees. So you have eight reps either side with the cars. You have eight reps either side with the donkey kickbacks. Once you do two or three sets of each, you should have great, great ability to connect to your hip muscles, all of the muscles of your hip, and it should feel that glute a little bit of temperature and a little bit of a, a little bit of burning in there. Once you have that connection, we're going to do the two big lifts, three sets of lunges and three sets of barbell squats. So we're bringing the lunges back and we're bringing the barbell squats back. And that means that we've done Six sets on Monday, six sets on Wednesday, and six sets of work on Friday. So that's 18 total sets through the week spread out. You've got the big lifts all there. You've used the right priming exercises to get you ready to be able to fire those muscles optimally, and you're good to go. If your main goal is to build a butt, then take six to nine weeks to train your glutes three days a week, make it your main focus, Frequency is king here, but also remember that it is imperative that you make sure that you eat adequate calories and you eat adequate protein to fuel muscle growth. Your training is a signal that is being sent. Your exercises are a signal that is being sent to your body. You're breaking down muscle tissue and it's only with proper refueling and proper rest that your body can repair the muscle bigger, better, and stronger. You must be in a calorie surplus if you want to build muscle. So this is where you want to focus on getting at least 30 grams of protein at each feeding, depending on how big you are, of course. Hopefully at the end of the day, hitting at least one gram per pound of body weight in protein. If you're 150 pounds, at least 150 grams of protein. Your sleep should be prioritized. Minimize or completely cut out alcohol for this time period to supercharge your results. 
Make sure that you measure yourself too. Measure around your glutes with a tape measure so you can see just how effective the right workout can be. Track your progress, and the more you track and measure, the more that you can manage and uh, and see the variables for your optimal res results in the, in the long term. So to recap, we are looking for big compound lifts that you can really load up with really heavy weight safely, but also, you know, you... A lot of times when I do my bigger lifts, I'm just a tiny bit um, apprehensive. Uh, I don't know if I would wor use the word scared, but there is this little fear in me that is like, okay, this is going to be a heavy weight. I really need to focus up here. If you don't have that mindset at least a little bit, a tiny bit in your training, then you might not be lifting heavy enough for growth. You're looking for frequent training sessions with adequate rest. So you're going to change up the exercises in order to get rest from those. I like to do things like squats one day where you're loaded heavy, and then you do hip thrusts another day where you have like a different load on a different angle. That's a good way to do it too. Usually three days per week is a good sweet spot for most with a rest day in between each work day. Make sure that you're able to connect to the muscle. You want to feel the burn, yes, but that's just so that you can find the connection. So you're able to maximally squeeze at the top of each rep and you're really able to feel the stretch at the bottom of every rep. Full ranges of motion, controlling every inch of the rep on the way down, not letting gravity lower the weight. If you let gravity lower the weight, it's not going to be as effective as you fighting gravity on the way down. Slow, three to five second lowering phase tends to really amplify muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth. I usually say in class, the slower you, that you lower, the stronger that you get. And of course, the muscle building signal is only as good as the building blocks that you give it and the time that you take to give your body to recover. So protein, sleep, these are your two biggest levers there when it comes to rebuilding. This isn't just specific to the butt either. This is a basic formula to grow pretty much any muscle. And when you put in the work all the time and hard effort, man, is it worth it when you have this finished product that you sculpted and that you earned, and you also get to take away the valuable wisdom that you learned along the way. Your body is in either an anabolic state or a catabolic state. Anabolic is building. Catabolic is breaking down. So if you have a goal, I have a lot of clients that are like this. I want to build my butt like J-Lo, but I also want to lose 30 pounds of body fat. Okay, well, you're talking about building a butt like J-Lo, which is going to be anabolic because that thing is huge. And you're talking about losing 30 pounds, which is catabolic. You have to break all that body fat down in order to lose 30 pounds. Lose weight and build butt at the same time? Well, it's not unheard of. It's just very challenging, especially for people that have, been experienced with lifting over the past couple of years or, or any period of time that you've actually been lifting a newbie, maybe, but no, if you've been training for any amount of time, it's very hard to do. So it's better to build first and then cut. What that does is you're building muscle mass, which is then more metabolically expensive at burning body fat. It's the same thing for people that are on a yo-yo diet. If you're on a yo-yo diet and you need to lose 30 pounds, if a client comes to me and says, I need to lose 30 pounds, but their metabolic rate is super low and they're maintaining weight on just like a thousand calories a day, like that's a problem. That means your body has adapted to a super low calorie burn. We need to rev that puppy back up. We need to resistance training. We, we need to increase calories. We need to build muscle mass. And that's a hard thing to tell someone when they come to you that they want to lose weight. You tell them that they need to do the opposite for a little bit in order to get there healthful, healthfully, that's a hard thing to do. So if you have that same goal of building a butt and losing body fat, it's better to build your butt first, go into a calorie surplus, make sure that you're eating enough protein, make sure that you're lifting heavy enough. And once your butt is the size that you want it, that's when you start cutting calories. And that's when you start cutting body fat. The frequency again is three times a week if you can and change the big lift every day. Now the rest periods, we didn't talk about the rest periods, but this is so important. You need to rest two to three minutes in between each set. Avoid circuit training. 
where you go, 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 go one thing into the next thing, into the next thing, into the next avoid cardio with weights. You literally need to go heavy for, for six to eight reps or whatever range you're in for two to six or eight to 12 or 15 to 20, wherever you're at, you need to go as heavy as you possibly can to hit that rep range and then rest. Literally set an alarm on your phone and do nothing. Two to three minutes. For those of you that are used to circuit classes, this can feel like an eternity. But you have energy systems in your body that need to be replenished. Just like if you were to sprint as hard as you could for 10 seconds, you couldn't immediately go into another sprint as hard as you could for 10 seconds. You have to be able to start to recover, and that takes time. And for the adaptations that you're looking for here, two to three minutes is really the, the, the money zone. You should feel ready for another challenging heavy set before you go. So feel free to rest more than two to three minutes here. Uh, even I've seen really, really big power lifters. They do a heavy set of squats and they'll rest 10 minutes before they do another set. Now that might be a slightly different adaptation. They're looking for strength gain and they're looking for maximal power output. Uh, that might not be what you're looking for here. Two to three minutes is the sweet spot. And I'm telling you, you're going to want to rush this. Most people rush this. I have a really hard time having people just take the rest. But I'm telling you, if you want maximal results, you have three sets of every exercise. You want to do squats, three sets in a row with two to three minutes in between each of those sets. Same slow tempo on the way down. Feel the stretch, full range of motion. That's it. Do not chase the burn. See if you can increase your weight every set. If you can increase your weight every set, that's amazing. You'll notice the stronger you get, the bigger that butt grows. So throw the weight on. If you feel safe, if you feel like you can perform it correctly, if you feel the form suffering, you got to drop the weight. But as you throw on the weight, the reps are going to drop. It's okay if you're in a, uh, let's say you're in the 12 to 15 or the 15, let's say you're in the 15 to 20 rep range and you throw on the weight and you don't get to 12, you don't get to 15. That's totally fine. You put on the weight, you dropped it down. It was probably your last set. Yeah, you're doing great. I love that, that strategy. There's no need to overcomplicate the exercise selections. Just do the most bang for your buck moves. The ones that we listed here today and gradually progressively overload them with heavy weight and just watch your butt grow sleep. This is how your body rebuilds protein. Those are the building blocks. Lifting is the stress signal and sleep is the rebuilding time. Remember to change your reps every two to three weeks. Novelty wins. And when I say you must be in a calorie surplus, higher calorie, higher protein, uh, we build in a surplus. We do not build in a deficit, but this doesn't have to be a ton of extra food. I'm talking, it just needs to be like 200 to 300 calories above your maintenance. This could be a protein shake in the morning and a protein shake at night, uh, whole foods. It could be, uh, extra chicken breast at, on your salad at lunch, just 200 to 300 calories a day more above your maintenance. And you should be totally good. Use whole foods. If you can supplement with whey or casein protein, if you need to, and you will see that butt grow. I can guarantee it. All right. So get to building you soon to be big behind beast. Let's do this thing. You got this. And that's it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this Training Tuesday episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Please share the knowledge that you gain with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. If you enjoyed this content, it helps us a ton if you could post on your social media stories a screenshot of this episode and include one takeaway that you learned and make sure that you tag me and share your journey. Tag me at livingthedream underscore podcast or at Coach Damien underscore SD. And let us know how this episode benefited you. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. Tell us if you have or are going to build your target muscles the right way. We want to know. Message us if you have any suggestions or tips that would help your Living the Dream team that we can discuss on future episodes. I'll be right here with you working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.